that when these commitments were made, you were in office and resources were already strained. Today, it's an even tougher time. How does the U.S. manage its commitment to these goals under these circumstances? Uh, you know, the U.S. has to manage its commitment. Per Pearl Alice made an important point, which is that the resources that are being applied to development assistance in the context of our overall budget are pretty small. I mean, when you talk about billions of dollars, that's a lot of money. But when you put it in the context of a federal budget that's more than $3 trillion at this point, uh, you see that our, our total development assistance budget is less than 1% of what the government spends. And the amount that we spend on development assistance in Africa is a fraction of that 1%. So it's a relatively small number with a huge impact. And it's a huge impact not just for the people who are on the receiving end of that, not just for the literally millions of lives we're saving with, those, with that money, but it's a lo huge long-term impact for the United States because our national security depends on stability around the world, especially in, in countries where terrorism can take hold. And our economic health depends in the long run on prosperity around the world. I mean, ultimately, Africans should become, and I believe will become, major trading partners. So we, we have to recognize our long-term interest is closely tied up with the relatively small amount of money we're spending on this. So even though we are entering a period where budgets are likely to be even more constrained than they were five years ago when I was the budget director and we were, uh, we were making the Glen Eagles commitment, uh, it's a commitment we, it's, a, it's an ongoing commitment that we need to keep and I'm encouraged that the Obama administration seems to feel the same way. Now five years after Glen Eagles, what can we do moving forward to refocus our efforts? Was there anything that was missed that you would like to do differently? Any commitments? You know, one thing that's become clear about development assistance overall from Glen Eagles, from the Millennium Development Goals and so on is uh, that we, we need to focus a great deal more attention on the Africans themselves that uh, make sure that they are putting in place good mechanisms of governance, that they are growing their own economies, that they are creating their own jobs. That's what they want. On the trips that I've taken with the one campaign, both this, this year and last year, that was the overwhelming message we got, at least from the private sector people we met. Uh, and I think that's where U.S. development assistance and U.S. policy needs to focus going forward uh, is on good, making sure that we assist those countries that have the capacity and the willingness to govern themselves well, number one. Uh, and number two is that we empower Africans to grow their own economies. You've said you're eager to see the administration's plan moving forward. Based on the data report, what do you want to see at the top of the White House's priority list? Well, the, the data report was mostly about commitment to resources, and we clearly want to see them stay on the same path that uh, President Bush started us on, but that candidate Obama committed to, to doubling foreign assistance, to making good on those promises. And there are a lot of signs that they're already going to do that with their Global Health Initiative and their uh, Feed the Future initiative. But in addition to the resource piece, we think uh, governance in Africa is very important, and we think economic growth and the role of the private sector, trade and investment is very important. Um, so I would like to see, uh, we, I think we'd like to see an acknowledgement of that and also some indication that they're ready to lead on trade. Uh, which is a lagging area, one of the things we commented on in our report. And you've said 2010 shouldn't be seen as an end point, right. but rather a turning point. Right. It, 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 this was um, a response to an awakening in 2005 of the importance of Africa. It was an appropriate response. It got us on the right track. But there are many other ways, uh, uh, increasingly sophisticated ways, that we're committing ourselves and measuring our progress in terms of uh, development. And the Millennium Development Goals is the one that the, the set of goals that sit right in front of us. We're 10 years in with five years to go. There's some some progress, but uh, generally speaking, we're off track in Sub-Saharan Africa. It's not too late. Uh, we're asking President Obama to take a bold plan to the UN in September, and uh, and we know it's a tough a tough time. But we actually uh, um, it's a tough time, especially with respect to resources. Um, but uh, these countries committed to the MDGs. Progress has been made. And we think there's a lot more that can be done.
as you were just saying, at times it can be difficult to measure that progress. What was one's greatest challenge in measuring that success? Well, the, 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 prob the problem is when you, um, when you make a commitment of dollars, that's what you're going to be measured by. And when you're measuring dollars, it looks like you think that uh, money solves the problem. And we don't believe that. We're not naive. Um, it's money well spent can solve the problem. And that's why it's very important if you look at our report, we don't just report on the appropriations of each country and how they lived up to it. There, um, there are chapters about sectors, about agriculture and health and education. And uh, by any measure, and I talked about it in the presentation here, there's been a dr dramatic improvement in a number of areas, especially health, but also in education over the last decade that uh, is directly linked to the funding. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank Appreciate you. it.